Welcome to another episode of the Boxing Lockdown Powered by SA Boxing Talk. I want to start the show on a rather sad note. We heard last night the passing of Damian Michael, a former boxing promoter in South Africa, Show Pony Promotions. From all of us here to the Michaels family, including Sean, Peter, and George Smith, um, we, we send our condolences. It's a really rough time for you guys, especially with COVID-19, but we are thinking about you. Devin, Hayden, Cyril, welcome to the lockdown. Um, Devin, have you done your hair, bro? Like, what, what's up with that? Wow, well, <laughs> so you noticed. Oh, my God. This is so weird. I posed it the other yeah. way. And Let's go, champ. Straight away, and she goes, wow, are you extra gray, or did you cut your hair? I said, no, I combed it the other way, and I was wondering who would notice. And you noticed, too. That's so sweet. It's one of one of my jobs, you know. I observe things. Gentlemen, we're talking about the stock in South African boxing. We want to talk about right now who's hot and who's slightly gone off the boil, but possibly no fault of his or her own. Devin, let me start with you. Um, I know you're a big Eastern Cape fan. Let's let's talk about the Eastern Cape fighters here in South Africa. Who's hot right now and who's not? Okay, so I'm going to start in like midway. I'm going to start with two guys who are, one's potentially hot in a potentially hot fight. The other guy, I don't know where he's quite going. South African titleist and Pila and Ponchana. He's just coming off a loss to Kanyele Bolana, which was uh, which title was that for, Cole? Was uh, your fight? Well, I mean, it's reigning uh, championship. Okay, so and I'm going to say, and I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you, it was an upset. It was an upset. I watched the fight. It was an excellent fight. Bolana fought his heart out, um, but. Bonchana still holds the uh, South African Championship. He's still a, a title holder. And a fight that I've been wondering, you know, what it's going to look like on TV, I think it's going to look great, against another hungry, undefeated fighter from Cape Town, Lunga Sitamela. So his is the career where we're not quite sure where it's going, but he, I believe, has put in a challenge for the SA title. They've just got to make it done. Against Pilo and Ponchano, who wants to get back on the horse and get back into the win streaks. And uh, I think it's an excellent fight. It's a championship fight. It's worthy of TV. What do you think? Well, it's interesting because uh, I think last week we were actually talking about Sitamela, that he's one of the fighters that actually needs to get a move on. And it's interesting that you mentioned that fight because once kind of won that, the prospect of the year three years ago, but he's done nothing since then. And he needs to get the momentum. Once coming off a loss, Pilos obviously got a little bit more experience because of his national amateur background, was in the national team, etc. But he has a fighter who potentially is yeah, and a fighter's going there, and they got to meet. Hayden, do you agree with that assessment or not? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That I mean, that fight is also. I mean, we we don't know what uh, Stimela has in the tank. You know, like will he come out and shock everyone? Sort of like Impenchana is the favorite, as you said, going into that fight. So it makes it it makes it interesting because we just know the quality and obviously Stimela is undefeated. So is does he still have what it takes? I mean, obviously being prospect of the year at one stage as well. I was trying to quickly mention what's on my um, hot, hot and, and, and not fights where, where guys are sort of meeting in their careers. A, a nice fight would be a Kani Puzi against Johnny Miller. I think that would be a good fight in the cruiserweight division. We know that Johnny enjoyed a lot of his good years um, about four or five years ago. And um, um, Kani Puzi's on his way up. So is it a matter of they're meeting somewhere in the middle? It's also interesting you talk about Johnny because he started his career, Cyril, as a heavyweight. He then dropped down all the way to light heavy and did remarkably well as a light heavy and then kind of ballooned up to heavyweight again. Do you think, do you think Johnny's still got enough dedication and hunger to actually get from him? Because he's fighting as a heavyweight now to get back down as a cruiserweight. Well, there's no denying um, Johnny Miller's, uh, he's, um, he's got uh, marketability. He's got fans. He's, but I don't think he's a heavyweight. I don't. I don't see him as a heavyweight. I don't think he's a heavyweight. I think he's a bit too small as a heavyweight. I would say cruiserweight would be his his best weight division. And I would love to. And as Hayden says, I would love to see him against Akani Puzi, who's a guy who I think is the stocks uh, stocks have risen. It's on a come up. So yeah, I'd love to see Akani Puzi against Johnny Miller. I think that would be a, a nice fight for the fans. A fighter who who had lost his way. But then all of a sudden came back was Tommy Ostos and upsetting Tubby some tune at a very close fight. Then losing quite convincingly in the rematch and just has completely gone off the boil. Devin, is there any way back for Tommy right now? 
I don't know, man. You know, what happens every time that we allow Tommy to make his way back, he seems to get pulled back into the lifestyle that stops him from progressing as an individual and as a human. I only hope that he comes uh, around one day and is able to make something of himself in life, not only in boxing, because right now he's obviously in a bit of trouble with the law. So we hope so. I mean, he was potentially one of the best we could ever have had, and it's so sad to see what slipped away. Hayden, do you ever think we'll see Tommy back in a boxing ring? Oh, I think we might see him back in the boxing ring, but will we see, you know, Tommy at his best again? I'm not sure about that. I mean, he was on the road at one stage. I was hearing that he was going down to light heavyweights again. Uh, that was towards the end of last year. Obviously, that's when everything, you know, sort of went down. And then there was another fight that was offered to him at Cruiserweight uh, again. And then that fell through, obviously, with everything that's gone on. So him at light heavyweight would have been ideal for me. I feel that uh, at cruiserweight, it's a little bit flat-footed because uh, of the weight that he has to carry. I like the way he moves. Here. I mean, as you, as you know, as Devin said, he's one of the best talents that's sort of slipped away from us. And his movements and, you know, his reach and how tall he was was one of his main assets. And being a southpaw, so just adding, adding, that, adding to that element, it's a little bit sad, everything that's gone on. But I do hope we see him in the ring. But at light heavyweight would be nice. Yeah, Cyril, that was my next question to you. You know, he came back after an absence and he, he upset Tabisim T- Tunu. Looked good in that division, moving around, up on his toes. The rematch, very flat-footed, fought the wrong fight, got hopelessly outscored. If he comes back, realistically, do you think he can still make light heavy, bearing in mind that there has been weight problems when he was a light heavyweight? I think uh, focused Tommy Ustiz and comfortably makes light heavyweight, if he, if he's focused. I think that's the problem in the past. We haven't seen that with him. And I think, yeah, if he's focused, I think he still makes light heavyweight. I don't know if he becomes an international superstar. He could have been, but he definitely beats everyone in the country at light heavyweight. Devin, are there any other fighters that come to mind that, that are on the rise, for example, or have slipped a little bit? What, well, what about what about about Solani, what about Solani Seti? I think I think that would be it would be unjust not to mention him. You know, world champion, unfortunately lost against John Casemiro. Um, Casemiro is not a bad fighter, three uh, three weight world champion. Um, you know, he came unstuck. Can he rebound? Can he rebound and can he come back? I think he definitely can rebound and he definitely can come back. I think the the complication lies with what seems to be a ever expanding group of people that are around him. When I think that a more focused Solani Tete is a guy with just La, a guy with just Loiso in his corner and that structured uh, manner in which he did his training camps of old. Um, Casemiro caught him. He caught him with a good shot. It was a, a real bell ringer. He could never recover from that. He got caught cold. It was early in the fight. Casemiro seized his opportunity. It's not going to happen every day. I think that Zolani Tete is a lot better than that performance suggested. A guy like Casemiro shouldn't have been able to get in of that obviously long reach for the bantamweight division. He can come back. It's going to take time. I think he needs to maybe have one or two checkup fights before he goes hunting again for a belt, though. And, and I agree with you. I think too many cooks spoil the, the soup, spoil the broth. Hayden, your opinion on, on how, how would you structure his career on uh, coming back to become a world champion? I think we've got to look uh, sort of pre the whole Mayweather situation, you know, where they, where they, where they switch trainers and they, and there's a whole bunch of politics that were, that were thrown in there. I think looking towards that, and obviously when he was in pre- preparations for Nanito Donair, I, I really fancied him to win that fight. Uh, I know Donair put in a good performance on that night against the, a replacement opponent, but I still feel that Zolani Tete on his day is, is just lethal and he would have laced uh, Donair with some of the hardest shots he's ever felt in his career. You know, that straight left hand is, is, is very lethal. The final which I really wanted to see, uh, obviously, a newer against Lani Tete in that, super, in that super competition. Never happened. Um, things happened for a reason. Unfortunately, he ran into Casemiro that day, and yeah, that's where we are right now. And I, I have to disagree with you. I'm not so sure that Tete would have beaten Doné based on the fact that Doné gave Monster everything and more Cyril. You don't have to agree with Cyril. Uh, Hayden or myself, what's your opinion on that? Um... I think the fight between Donny and Tete would have been interesting. I'm, I'm a bit on the fence on it. Um, I think Tete, Tete is, is a different kind of boxer to Monster, even though I think Monster beats Tete. I think Tete might have aged Donny. He might have just aged him over 12 rounds. It's a, uh, you know, obviously using his his reach advantage, 
his footwork. I think he he might have just outboxed him for twelve rounds and. And staying, with the Eastern, and, and staying with the Eastern Cape, we can't not mention Azinga Fazili coming off a loss. He is my fighter, but my opinion is he's still relevant. He's still hot. Um, he's in a brilliant position now. Obviously, we fought tooth and nail for him to engage in another IBF eliminator. The loss was a setback. Uh, we have to accept it now, irrespective of what went on. Devin, do you agree with me? Yeah, the guy's, what, 21, 22 years old? 23. So is the, yeah, 23. So he's still a kid. He's got a lot of time to learn. And, you know, the only difference between winning and lo- getting knocked out in that fight was the fact that when shit went south, he didn't hold the guy sufficiently. Because I don't think in his correct, career correct. he'd ever been in that kind of position where he's been rattled quite badly and he needs to survive. But believe me, he's going to learn that lesson now. So I expect to see a, a, a much more polished version of the next Zinger Fazilia that you're going to get because he now knows the danger when you're hanging with the punches in the division, which now he cannot avoid. Yeah, Hayden, what's your assessment of, of what, what I just said? Yeah, I like Zinger. I think he's still got all the, all the desires that it takes to become a world champion. Obviously, he, he did slip up that day, but... In that fight itself, before everything happened and occurred, he was well set and cruising on the way to victory. And it happens in fights. We see this in the shoe, in the big title fights. You can't rest for a second. You just can't afford to throw a lazy jab and you know stand in one position. It's just a learning curve that a youngster has to go through in his life. Obviously, never having been dropped before uh, in the pro ranks, at least. Uh, I don't know about the amateurs, but in the pro ranks, um, those these are things that he can learn from. And Rocky Mob is seriously a great. Like, you can't even underestimate him. Like, Azinga made him look really bad for someone that's that good. Right, and staying with uh, Eastern Cape, obviously there's a hot prospect, Sivio Nonchinga, really doing well. Um, eventually going to fight for a world title. I think all three, all four of us will agree that he is something special down in East London. Ticha obviously needs to rebound. We discussed that either last week or the week before. Um, still a very good talent. But obviously, he needs to rebuild. And Devin, how would you how would you suppose he rebuilds his career after his loss against Joy? Ooh, that's a hard one because you know at the time when he fought Joy, he was on the absolute up. He was on the push from his promotional outfit. He was uh, being called every kind of great name under the sun. But then was sadly mismatched that particular day and. Why they stuck him in with a guy like Joy, I will never know at this stage of his career. An unnecessary risk, and look what's happened. It developed into quite a bad hiding. Obviously, he can come back. Whether or not he's going to be shy to stand in front of a guy and trade, especially if it's the Joy-type fighter, I don't know. It might have to be an adaptation of his style so he doesn't get caught like he did again. Guys, I think we've covered the Eastern Cape. Are there any other fighters you guys want to mention that are hot? Lamarty, we, we've agreed uh, last week or the week before that he needs to get a move on now. He's, he's world-class, world-rated. Um, so let me ask you, what fight would you like for him now? I know we did discuss him fighting JJ. You know, that's obviously not going to happen for now because they're in the same promotion. Both are Eastern Cape kids. Both are going different ways. But where would you like to see him move now? Um, where does he move now? I think um, he needs to maybe set him, get set for an eliminator for for a title. I think just go for a world title. I think that's go go for the big one. That's that's where he is now. I mean, he can't. I don't see him going. He can't go backwards. He can't fight anybody below that unless he fights Sojika here at home, which may not happen anytime soon. So that's. Uh... Uh, Hayden, let's switch to KZN. I think there's pretty much only one really big fighter there, and he's doing exceptionally well, Marutim Talani. Um, your opinion on what's next and what you think should be next for him? Obviously, I know because we, we're in a situation now with the mandatory, which we have to fulfill, um, unless the unification championship bout comes about. But as it stands now, we, we focus now after the COVID-19 situation on him doing his mandatory. But I think um, I think he's hot. I think he's relevant. Um, your opinion on KZN and fighters and potentially probably let's talk about Maruti as well. Okay, so I'll start off with Maruti. I know Dev wants the fight against Roman Gonzalez. I think everyone wants that fight. I want the fight against Jose. 
I really want the Tanaka fights. I mean, that's that's for me. And and, and let's be honest, as you know, Mauricio Sane is an absolute legend in Japan. I mean, if that fight could ever come up, it's a unification bout. It's something. Obviously, he's got to take care of mandatories. But now I'm just saying, like a unification. Because I think like Mauricio before he retires is almost in need of that unification fight, just to solidify himself as the ultimate number one in the flyweight division. Even though I think most of us have already accepted the fact that he's number one, I still think that Tanaka is the fight that he really makes him like really number one. And the rest of the KZN fighters, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a. Uh, it's Maruti and the rest. You know, it's it's a it's a difficult one. There are a couple of guys. I know that Joshua Pretorius is a heavyweight in KZN. Um, you got the guy that fought Ricardo Malajica is in KZN. Uh, the guy that lost to Zelani Tete in about 11 seconds is from KZN. But those are the cream of the crop coming up from KZN. So it's a difficult one when we're talking about KZN Natal. And obviously, I'm from KZN Natal, so it's a bit of a difficult one. If we can just go back about Tanaka, unfortunately, he's actually vacated the title. He's moved up. The, the chances of him making flyweight again are going to be very slim. So there's a vacant championship for the WBO 112 pound. And he's going to be, the plan is for him to be challenging Aoko for a mega fight in Japan between two Japanese superstars. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. And I can assure you, though, we did try and engage with Tanaka's people last year. Uh, for unification when Maruti was um, doing his fight with against Kuroda. And we were basically turned down. They they wanted no part of Maruti. So fortunately, I would have loved that fight because it would have been for the vacant ring magazine belt too. And uh, I would love to chase down a second ring belt for, for the gym and for South Africa. But unfortunately, that's just not going to happen. Cyril, we've discussed, uh, we've discussed Durban. Uh, let's touch on Free State, the prominent fighter, Lorato Dlamini, obviously with us as well. Do um, you see any other talent coming through? And 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 how do you see Lorato right now? Sure, it's hard to see any other talent coming through on that level. I mean, Lorato, he's moved up to world class now. He's world class at the moment. And he, uh, I think, yeah, he seems to be getting better all the time. That's, that's the encouraging thing. You, you don't see him going back. You don't see him getting exposed or anything like that. He just keeps improving. So I think the sky's the limit for him. You see him going all the way. I see him going all the way. I think he can go all the way. And it's only a matter of time. Especially when you think in the division is in um, a guy like Gary Russell might, is probably going to move up for that or vacate that um, WBC belt. So he's in line. I think he's, he's, he could just win. Put, put, put him in a very strong position. Devin, it would be unjust for me not to ask you about the Western Cape in terms of province, who's hot and who's kind of going off the boil. Um, yeah, let's let's talk about let's talk about let's we're gonna mention it. Emil Kalakuzi, uh, spoken about in Cape Town as the number one fight in Cape Town. Do you agree with that or you don't agree? You do you disagree with that? No, I totally disagree with it because unfortunately. You know, the kid's 20 and over. When you look at his list of wins, you got to kind of wonder who did he actually beat. There's a certain amount of uh, no risk at all costs being used in his career. He's taking fights against guys who are certainly over the hill, guys who seem to be coming in and out of shape. He moves around his own weight division quite a bit. You know, he's sometimes, he was a junior middleweight, then he went to middleweight, then he went two kilos higher. You know, it's like settle in a weight, Stay where you are, but then start fighting the guys who count. And the guys who count is an entire top 10 list in South African boxing that him and his people will absolutely have no part of, but are glad to point to the fact that he's worthy of fighting Canelo. So I don't know what Kool-Aid is being drunk around there, but uh, it's certainly not uh, that staunch yet where he can go looking for that Mexican guy. But other than hold, him, hold on, hold on, hold, whoa, whoa, hold on one second, because I, I saw Cyril's look and Hayden's look. Has there been somewhere documented that he's good enough to fight Canelo? Oh man, you ask anybody who will uh, be willing to tell you from his uh, crew of people that yes, of course he's ready to fight Canelo. Where, where have you been, Colin? Don't you know? Of course he's ready to fight Canelo. That's okay. And uh, Hayden's going on a date after COVID nineteen with Eva Mendes. Um. <laughs> Let me, Darren, no, let me no, but you. Look, I'm not trying to. I'm not. I'm not trying to be facetious here, but you know his career is worthy of talking. Like you know, it goes down to when I told you I don't like bullshit, and I don't like bullshit being told to people in order to sell them tickets to come and buy 
the product that you're selling. You know, the guy is worthy of being tested, but he's not being tested and that's happening on purpose. He's now gone and I've heard sign for some manager promotional outfit that I've never heard of. You know, it's like a string of career kind of, you know, we like to make the big announcement, but when the announcement gets made, the people who know what they're talking about know that it, it doesn't actually mean much. Is this going to mean he's going to be a superstar in America? Well, I don't know. I don't think it does because I don't know who his people are. But other than that, aside from that, Emil Kalakuzi aside, they are in the featherweight division. We obviously know the big debacle that's going on at the moment. You've got uh, Timbani and Bangata, who is either 12 or 13 and 0. He's a WBF uh, title holder um, against Abdulaziz Kanet, who is uh, also undefeated. He's in the rankings. They were supposed to fight for the vacant belt. Um, and the interesting slant on that fight is that it was going to be ex-convict Abdulaziz Kanet against a cop and uh, an, a, a presiding officer in South Africa, which is Timbani and Bangata. So what an edge to sell a story of a fight on. It would be compelling for the people of Cape Town to watch. We're waiting, though. I believe there's court battles and uh, Asanda Ginki's people are also claiming that they have a right to challenge for the SA title ahead. So until that mess kind of gets sorted out, we're kind of waiting on a lot of things. Hopefully good to see if Nick Radley can get back in the mix and get a win under his belt before the year's out. That was my next thing, but we have to talk about Kunert, obviously turning his life around, you know, reformed, absolute credit to him, a credit to the sports. Um, I, I take my head off to the kid. I really, really do. Na Nicholas Radley, let me ask you, so has he got anything left? He's still the South African champion at light heavy. Obviously, he fell dismally against Rowan Campbell. Do you think he's still got anything left to offer? Um, I think he could, he could still have one or two fights. But you know he's fighting in a weight division, it's a which is not very strong in the country South Africa. It's it's yeah, the light heavies aren't uh, there isn't too many aren't too many special. So I think maybe for him for him he should probably aim at one big fight, I don't know against who, maybe even if it's an international fight, take it an international title or something, and then call it quits. I mean he's he's not the youngest guy around, so it might be time for just one big shot, shot at, at a big fight and see how what how that goes. If he does great, then he continues. If not, then maybe just call it a day. Hey, then let me ask you a final question for Cape Town Fighters, and maybe Devin can also give give us his opinion on that. Who is the number one fighter in Cape Town, in your opinion, right now? It's between the two featherweights. The winner of that fight is the number one in Cape Town. Right, yeah. right. Devin, would you agree with that? Yeah, without a doubt. At the moment, I'm probably edging in Bangata because uh, record-wise, I think he's done a little bit more. Uh, and he seems to have uh, loads of potential. Uh, if he can just keep his shoulder in his socket, we'll see down the course of his career if that's possible. But, you know, it is. I think it's the winner of that fight takes the number one pound-for-pound -pound mantle in the Western Cape. Let's move on to Joburg. Hayden, your 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 fighter that's that's doing really well, really well, and maybe needs a little, and another fighter who needs a little bit of a push. Yeah, I, I really like uh, Joblani McKenzie. I think he's the number one prospect in in, in the Gauteng region, at least. Um, between him and Akani Puzi, I think between those two mm -hmm. currently, and yeah, um, yeah uh, I'll mention those two for now because I feel like. McKenzie obviously based in Pretoria. He's, he's he's under Sebastian Rothman, undefeated, and he's had a hard road here. Like let's let's be honest, he he's fought some top contenders um, in his last couple of fights. He's really a proven prospect. He's not like one of those prospects that you know have fought nobody. You can see they're good, but they just there. He's actually a guy that's, that's that's proven that he can maybe take that next step. And I think the fight against Harry Simon Jr., although Harry Simon Jr. is not his dad, uh, he still will prove to be a test. He's very lanky, very different to what McKenzie's come up against. So I don't think McKenzie's fought someone that has beaten his own heart, so to speak. So I think that's what the new elements pre present. And then Akani Puzi, I mean, Alan Sawil's taking him along nice and slowly, but I think that it's getting to a point now where he's going to sort of jump onto the next level. And I'm really excited to see how he goes against some of those guys that are competing amongst the international titles. I think that's where he's at. Yeah, and I want to yeah actually, I, I agree with you. We, we spoke about that last last week, actually, on one of the shows, that then he needs to get a move on. So are any of the fighters in Joba catching your eye that need to be pushed? Or are you happy with their progress? Um, I'm, I'm happy with the, with the progress. I think what I like um, in Joburg is that um, 
there are well before this lockdown there were quite a number of promoters who were willing to put guys on show willing to push guys it's a it's a pity a guy like um Benge, Chilani Benge, only got to fight once last year and he had he had a fight lined up now which obviously didn't happen he's one guy i'd love to see get back in the ring and get and push on um hopefully he can get a couple of fights soon you know can push on because he's i think he's international quality he's fighting a very difficult weight division in terms of world titles and, and things but he's he's definitely he's, he's, he's a quality fighter a very talented fighter who can go who can do well Guys, we're going to switch to international stuff. And one of the fans wrote that they wanted to talk about trilogies in boxing. And I don't really want to get too too, deep, too much into it. But I want to ask you, Devin, trilogies. you got to think Fraser, Ali. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think those fights between the two of them made them? Because... Would would Ali have been Ali without Fraser, and would Fraser have been Fraser without Ali? I think you can say, yeah, the two of them made each other, but did those fights make who they are? Um, I think more for Joe Frazier, yes. Muhammad Ali, I think, when you look over the expanse of his career, the diverse things that he was involved in, where he was attracting fame and uh, and adoration from religious sects right through to white America, right through to winning three world titles, right through to this tragic end of his career, and unfortunately his last, uh, say, 20 years of his life. Um, I think that th- the fight obviously might have caused a lot of damage and caused his downfall, caused his deterioration, uh, added to it certainly, so did Larry Holmes possibly. But I think people are remembering uh, Muhammad Ali for the amount of things he's accomplished, not just in particular that fight, although, of course, that fight and that trilogy, a cornerstone of his career. And even now, people are still talking about Gatti Ward. I mean, great three fights. Both of them, credit to the sport. Uh, Gatti, unfortunately, losing his life under mysterious circumstances. But people, even in this modern day, you know, people still talk about that those three fights. Do you, I mean, Mickey Ward was a good fighter, but those three fights made Mickey Ward. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think it was, I think it was Arturo Gatti who said after one of his fights, he said that he's finally met his like twin brother in the ring and, uh, you know, in terms of fighting styles. And I think that whenever you talk to the, um, you know, the older generation, that fight is always sort of. Is, is the one where they're like, that's real boxing. That's real boxing. Go watch Ward Gatti. That's real boxing. And I think that it's so disappointing when you sort of show them a video nowadays and show that fight because it's just like, that's where the guys didn't really like think too much about longevity of their careers. They just sort of went in and obviously as a, as a result after their careers might not be the most healthy, but um, sort of put it on a show for the fans and made sure that fans got in there. Cyril, so we've got to talk about Bo Holyfield, great trilogy. Bo coming out two, two, two wins to one on Holyfield. But here's the thing, is that Riddick Bo was, to me, the flop of the 90s in terms of heavyweights. I thought he would have been way, way better. Just not dedicated, not disciplined. But here's the thing, is that he beats Holyfield twice, has a great career. I think he retires unbeaten, even though he won two, two, two DQs against Andrew Galotta. But Holyfield goes on and beats Tyson and becomes a four-time heavyweight champion. And I've got to talk about this trilogy uh, before before you answer my question. Um, John Ruiz and Evander Holyfield, three fights, absolute effing, oh, it's just so bullshit, it's just boring. But going back, did you ever imagine Evander Holyfield losing to Bo and then coming back to beat Mike Tyson? No, yeah, nobody would have thought would have thought that would happen. Um, after Holyfield lost to Bo, uh, it it just didn't look like it was going to happen for him. It didn't look like he would reach the highs that he did, did reach. But he went on and had a better career than Bo. I think I think he had a better career than Bo. When you think really Bo, you think of the guy who just who threw away his title instead of facing Lennox Lewis. So yeah, I'd rather. So uh, I think Holyfield Holyfield just shows like the guy went down. Was written off, came back up and reached great heights and beat 
the most famous boxer in the world, biggest name in the, the out there. So that's that's fantastic. That's amazing. Shows heart and character. Gentlemen, I think, gentlemen, I think we're going to leave it at that. It's, uh, sorry, Hayden, you want to say something? What's your favorite trilogy of all time? Yeah, Fraser, Fraser Ali. I mean, especially Thriller Minute, you know, the last fight was so brutal. Um, in this modern day of boxing, we will never, ever see a kind of fight like that ever again. Um, I think that fight defined both fighters. Fraser wanted to carry on fighting. Ali was the closest that he ever came to death. And I also believe that would have been the right time for Ali to call it a day. I know that he reclaimed the title for the third time, which was history at the time against Leon Spinks, but that would have been okay. The fact that he carried on, I I think he should have called it a day after that fight. And Gentlemen, I think we're going to leave it a little bit at that. Um, Devin, your last party shot for the show. Um, I think that uh, there's a lot of talent that is out there burning brightly in South Africa. You know, the names that we mentioned of the guys that are on the up, the guys that are in lights. I hope to see them uh, all fighting each other. And I want to see Sitamela come to the Eastern Cape, come and fight Pilo and Ponchana for that title. And I want to see Siakolwa Kuse, the adventure that his career is turning out to be, to carry on. And I want to see where he can go internationally as well, in particular. We didn't mention him, but I love that guy. Great little fighter. Hayden, your last parting shot. Yeah, also very excited about the upcoming talents. We're going through a really good patch at the moment um, with, in terms of upcoming talents. I just hope it keeps continuing. Obviously, the amateur systems, is, uh, I don't want to go too much negative, but yeah, anyway, I hope that more and more talent sort of comes out and that we can breed them on the professional scale. And yeah, I'm hoping for more and more trilogies in the future. I don't know how many trilogies are actually going to happen in the future, uh, considering as you've beaten someone once, you run as far as you can and you protect yourself as hard as you can. Uh, <laughs> sort of nowadays, so... Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you for listening. Uh, for everyone at home, appreciate it. Cyril, your last parting shot. Um, yeah, I'm excited about the talent that's coming through, and I really hope promoters look after the the talent and they they give them the right fights, the right fights that are going to help their career as move along, as as opposed to protecting guys too much or pushing them too fast. You know, things have got to happen at the right times, the right fights at the right time at the right stage of the fighters' careers. I really hope this happens and fighters stay busy. Hopefully that will happen after this lockdown and hopefully that's soon. So, yeah, that's... Guys, it's been real. Thanks for joining us. A big viva from all of us. Stay home, stay safe, and we will see you soon from all of us. This has been the Boxing Lockdown, powered by SA Boxing Talk.